Hello everybody. This is Josh Spicer from GameWisdom.com. Welcome to another developer live play. For tonight's play, for those of you watching this recorded, this is being this was streamed live from my Twitch channel, GW Bicer. And for you folks watching this live, thanks so much for tuning in. Our game tonight is going to be Concealed Intent. This is the first game from Jara Technology. And I spoke with him on the podcast a few weeks ago. There'll be a link to that in the notes below or an annotation for those of you watching this recorded. But tonight we're going to talk about the game, play some of it, and I'm sure he is going to kick my ass at least a minimum of five times when we do an online play. But please welcome from Jar Technology, Charles. Good morning. Oh, good, good evening where you are. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Charles is in Malaysia right now. I think, is it like a 8 to 10 hour time difference? 12. 12, oh, I, I was going to say 12. I thought it was, but I won't go that far. But, yeah, we are definitely having a bit of an international uh, live stream tonight. I know, oh my goodness, so it's like around a little bit after 6 my time. So it's probably like around, what, like 8 o'clock in the morning for you? 6. Uh <laughs> I know the Whew. It is insane sometimes when we have these international casts, but I think this is the first time we're actually doing something international with the live stream. Normally I've been doing this with the recordings on the Game Wisdom channel. But um, since we last spoke, obviously Concealed 10 came out of early access. It's been available on Steam. How are things going with you in the game? Um, pretty good. It's been out two weeks now. Mm -hmm. And um, what I really wanted from the release was there to be no bugs, no bad <laughs> bugs, and for it to be fairly smooth. And I got what I wanted in that regard. There were two, two fairly small things um, that um, sort of uh, slipped through, which I fixed now in a in a quick update. Someone pointed out to me that uh, the Mac, on a Mac, the mouse wheel doesn't work, which makes sense because my mouse, my <laughs> Mac mouse, does not have a mouse wheel, so. It's something I never even considered testing, mm -hmm. and and there was another thing like that, and uh, uh, yeah, so it, that was that was my main concern, and it went fine, so I'm I'm very happy. I'm, I'm not going to be one of those people on Gamma Sutra who say their release was marred by a um, crashing bug. Um, and as for as for sales, I mean sales were uh, reasonably in line with what I expected, mm -hmm. uh, and I have. You know, I, I wasn't expecting to be able to retire or anything like that. It's <laughs> just, uh, you know, if I sell more than I did in um, more than I did in early access, and I'll be happy. Cool. And for those of you watching this live right now, I just want to um, point out or ask if Charles is coming in too low. Please let me know in the Twitch stream. Uh, last time when we did the Bit Shifter live stream, I noticed that um, Paul and Jim's voices were a little bit lower than I wanted to. So I've tried to correct things for this one. But if you can't hear Charles for any reason, please let me know and I will raise the volume up. Um, from Twitch, I don't. Things seem to be going good on mine. I'm not noticing any dropped. Uh, frames or anything like that. If there is any lag, uh, maybe try reloading or going back in. I did have to do that when I started the stream here. But uh, to get back to Conceal Intent and Troll, so uh, I think that's a really good uh, example of sort of what we talked about on the podcast with how well Early Access has been helping. Uh, when we spoke, I think you mentioned just how great it was to have all these extra eyes on the game, and I think that's a going or a very important lesson for independent developers. You're never going to catch everything, no matter how well you are on your own. No, no, no way at all. <laughs> <laughs> just um, many things. I mean, there, there was, during early access, there was at least one bad crashing bug that slipped through. Mm -hmm. And just that by itself was enough to scare me so mm. much. Yeah. That uh, I took the release very carefully. No new features added for the month beforehand. Just mm. bug fixes, yeah, and the like for you know quite some time. And uh, yeah, because I, I, you you read on 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 Gama Sutra all those people who have problems with their release, and mm -hmm. the most common thing is that there's a they discover a bug in the week of their release. And, yeah. 
I just I did not want that to be me. <laughs> yeah, and we've talked about this multiple times on the cast, but that launch window is such a big deal, and we've seen games just stumble out of the gate, whether it's because of bugs, not enough PR, um, something happened like the week before, anything, there's just any number of things that can go wrong, and you really have to be careful about getting the game, you know, as good as it can be before that release. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, I think that um, the, the release was in... The release was in um, in line with with expectations based on um, on early access sales. I mean, I got um, well so far. Touchwood, <laughs> Touchwood. My refund rate has gone down. <laughs> um, I've gotten triple the number of reviews that I had before, mm-hmm. which was good. And because um, before I had three, I think, and one came in the day before the release <laughs> as well. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, sales are roughly in line with what you'd expect based on, on, on early access. And I'll probably give more figures on that uh, later. Not the exact figures, but sort of mm-hmm. uh, rough and, figures. Yeah, and before the stream, we were sort of talking a little bit more about the whole Twitch thing. And Charles had a question. I figure it will be a great discussion point for some time during this stream as well. So we'll be talking about that at some point later in. So, to talk more about what we're going to be doing tonight, I figured we're going to try and show off the different parts of Concealed Intent. Which, for those of you watching this who don't know what this game is about, this is another simultaneous turn-based strategy game, or as it's commonly referred to as the Wego genre. If you've seen the game Frozen Synapse from a few years ago, it's similar in genre, but it's going to be different in play, as we're going to demonstrate tonight. And for, our, I guess, our uh, list of activities, we're going to show off a little bit of, I think, the skirmish mode. Uh, the first time we're going to just do, I think, me with Charles as sort of my wingman versus the AI, just to go over the UI, some of the design decisions, essentially how you would play the game. And then later in, we're going to do probably a few online matches and pretty much watch... Charles just completely destroy me for a good I'm going to say 30 to 40 minutes of <laughs> the complete destruction on my part. Yeah, luckily the game is slow enough that I, I don't think I could beat you five times in 30 minutes. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> <Maybe> good. <twice. laughs> well, that could be an achievement. You could add that in. Beat someone five times in 30 minutes. Uh, you can call it the um, jab offensive or something like that. Okay, uh, before we start the skirmish mode, um, for people watching this for the first time, whether it's live or recorded, uh, could you talk just like a, briefly about what is Concealed Intent, Charles? Okay, well, as you said, Concealed Intent is uh, simultaneous turn-based, um, and what that means is each player will put their plans in uh, at the same time as each other, and then you'll click, and in the case of the computer, it'll be... Um, uh, pretty much automatic that as soon as you click action both people's plans will play out or once both people have entered their plans the plans will play out when we, when we play against each other and uh, it's a space based game and it's fully 3D so you can go up and down um, above the plane, below the plane, around and it's um, the, sort of main, uh, the main point of I think hopefully difference between other games Mm-hmm. is that there's a detection system. So you start off not knowing where the enemy is, and then as time goes on, you gain more information and better firing solutions against the enemy. Um, but there's still the possibility of, of essentially hiding or running away and essentially disappearing from the other person's view. Mm-hmm. And this is what we kind of talk about on the cast, with um, how you sort of describe Conceal 10 as sort of like submarines in space. With like the concept yes. of sonar and how visible someone is on radar. Yes, yes, that was sort of uh, one of the original ideas. Of, was uh, the original concept was Homeworld and Frozen Synapse with mm-hmm. a little bit of submarine game thrown in. 
So the game, uh, for those of you obviously watching it right now, you can see that there are four main modes. You obviously have the tutorial mode. The campaign is sort of like a... It's just like a straight through with the missions, but there is some persistence. I, from what I saw, like things, as long as you don't destroy like your drones and your items, sort of carry across from mission to mission. And then we have, of course, the skirmish mode. I think this is sort of the mode... I think when we talk about on the cast, this is the one that you sort of spent a lot of time on, which is giving the player essentially the freedom to create whatever scenario they want, and then they can play it however they choose. So we have these different modes, and then last but not least, we have the online play. And I believe uh, when we talked last time on the cast, Charles, you said that online play for at least right now, or at least for the foreseeable future, is going to be friends only. Is that right? Uh, there's still a button to find a random okay. uh, a random player, uh, but the number of people who are online at the moment means it's very unlikely that anyone will get a game. Okay. So Steam playing with your Steam friends is uh, much preferred. And the game does have does it have the play by email like kind of option, or is it just online? Both players have to be at the same time. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, but by default, the if you play against a uh, Steam friend, if you play against someone random online, mm -hmm. then each turn takes five minutes okay. uh, maximum. If you play uh, against a Steam friend, by default, it's seven days, Whew. and you can go up to thirty days if you want. Okay. All right. And for those of you watching this live, if you have any questions about the game or any questions for Charles, be sure to leave them in the Twitch chat. So, we'll start with some skirmish. Like I said, this will be a way of... It'll allow us both to talk about the UI. You'll be able to see what I see. You'll be able to talk about the strategies and the many things that I will most likely do wrong. <laughs> so, uh, we're setting up a skirmish mode. As you can see, we have different options available. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Charles, could you go over, I guess, what are like each like objective or game mode? Okay, well... There's Jewel, which is the sort of basic one which you probably want to do tonight, and mm -hmm. list one of the others really grabs your attention. Mm -hmm. That's basically just one on ones. You versus the AI um, of any any number of ships you want, well, up to 99 ships. Mm -hmm. So you have as many ships as you want, they have as many ships as you want, and it's just last person standing wins. Mm -hmm. uh, with the bases, it's essentially the same as a Jewel except each side also has a base to defend and if you destroy the, the enemy's base then you win and, and likewise if they destroy your base they win mm -hmm. yeah, even if you still have ships in, uh, in space waves are essentially infinite enemies every few turns some more enemies will spawn and they'll head towards your base you'll have a base and if, when that base is destroyed game's over but until then you'll just keep going and going and going so that can actually uh, that can last quite some time. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, Saviour, uh, was a mode suggested by uh, an early access player. What that is, is there's a number of civilians heading towards a civilian base, so you don't have control of the base, and a number of uh, enemies uh, that spawn to, to try and, well, they'll, they'll attack you first, as long as you're within in range, but they may also try and attack the civilians. And uh, you just got to try and save as many as you can. Uh, and the thing, the interesting thing with that is, uh, on the suggestion of this uh, early access player, in the early stages, the everyone you don't have a good identification on appears as neutral, and you only know whether they're enemies or civilians once you've gained a certain amount of uh, detection on them. Cool. But yeah, I think we will stick to the basic skirmish mode for this one, or the dual mode. So, um, as we talked about on the podcast, the skirmish mode kind of like won out, I guess, from your fan base, like deciding what to focus on with Concealed Intent? Yeah, that's exactly right. When I went into, uh, when I went into early access, one of the things I wanted to know was where I should spend my time. Because it, it, I could keep going forever on this game. Yeah. Kind of It'd be very easy. So um, I put a bit of effort into all three modes, and I could put a lot more effort uh, into into one. I thought uh, with the time I had available. 
So I just asked the community on early access, which which one do you think is the uh, would be the most uh, useful or the most enjoyable for you, the players? And it was pretty overwhelming that they wanted more skirmish. Mm -hmm. They wanted yeah. they wanted replayability essentially. Yeah. And that kind of replayability is very important for any kind of strategy or tactical minded game. And th what you do with Conceal 10, with being able to basically define the scenarios yourself, gives a lot more replayability. And it goes sort it's similar to a post I made a while ago regarding procedural versus linear games or linear game design. And for any kind of strategic game or something that you want like the environment to have to impact how the game works, you really need to have these kinds of randomization or procedurally generated options. And for those of you watching this, you can definitely see there's a lot of different ways to play, and we can easily set up who knows what kind of crazy scenarios if we had the time tonight. Yes. <laughs> I've, seen, um, I've seen a few uh, Let's Players just hit that random button and then start. <laughs> it often it often ends up results in a quite short match. Mm -hmm. So what we have down here, we'll keep it to dual random map. That should be fun. We have these additional modifiers here. I think to just to keep things straightforward, we'll leave them off. So we'll choose our ship. So how do I guess the various ship types work in the game, Charles? Okay. Well, there's the Corvette, which is the ship from the campaign, and the ship we'll be using probably for the online game. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of the uh, jack of all trades. It can do pretty much uh, any role. And then after that, they're generally shown on, on the screen there in increasing order of, uh, of power. So skiff is um, basically like the little grunt. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you go up to essentially the long range sniper, which is the cruiser. Uh, and the destroyer being the sort of short range uh, tank, you have to get up r very close to the enemy for a destroyer. Mm -hmm. I, so I'm five seconds behind, so I've, oh, yeah. I've, I've jumped back and forth. I'm not sure what you're looking at right now. <laughs> um, right, so you're up, you're up at the destroyer. Mm -hmm. So and then there's the interceptor, which is very fast, um, short range ship, whereas the the uh, destroyer is. Uh, a slow, sh a slow, powerful, and heavily armored ship. Mm -hmm. The uh, interceptor is a very fast, hard-hitting ship. Mm -hmm. um, the scout, uh, a not so good long-range sniper. Um, the frigate, which is um, so, is, is more. It's another more tank, tanky uh, ship. Um, and then I think we're down at the the skiff again, which is of course the mm -hmm. not so good ship, the useless ship. Yeah. In terms of like the actual balance, how did you decide on how you want like what kind of ships to be in the game? Um, I thought about what sort of tactics mm -hmm. I wanted to enable, and then chose the ships based on that. And also the, the components are also chosen based on that on that basis. Okay, so I think um, I agree with you, Charles. We'll go with the Corvette as sort of the jack of all trades. It's probably the one new players are going to be most familiar with, since it's obviously the ship of choice in the campaign. So yes, it's, and it has the loaded the uh, the highest capacity and mm -hmm. has no uh, no fixed things. Other ships, there are some things on them you're not allowed to take off. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to take uh, the double he heavy beams off a cruiser because essentially that's what a, that's what the cruiser is. It wouldn't be a long range sniper without those heavy beams. Mm -hmm. With the Corvette, you can take anything except the engine off, and you can put quite a lot on. Yeah. And as you can see over here, there is a whole lot we have access to. So obviously we're not going to go through each and every one. That could probably take a good 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. But in terms of like this kind of, I guess, mechanic, um, this is my question is, for new players, and especially for myself learning the game, What's like a general like good strategy to go with when outfitting your ship? Well, it, you can go with what it's currently got loaded on it, mm -hmm. um, and or just add a little bit more of the same, and that'll work reasonably well. Uh, it's basically set up at the moment to be uh, a drone ship. So if you want to carry on that line, you could just add in uh, another drone mm -hmm. uh, and some more uh, uh, countermeasures. That'll work quite well. 
Uh, or you could just take everything off and go for something slightly different. Like you could try adding two heavy beams mm -hmm. and try being more of a sniper. Or you could add uh, multi-pulse, uh, which is like a sort of short-range, high-powered, like a, like a shotgun mm -hmm. uh, in, in FPSs uh, and go for the sort of uh, heavy hitting. Or another, <laughs> another popular one is to go for the usurping build, which is where you try to steal your, your opponent's drones from them. Another popular one. <laughs> and as you can see, a lot of these really do offer a good amount of choice for the player. And combined with the skirmish system, I, I can see why it was the popular option to give the game so much more replayability. So, now obviously, as you can see over here, we already have a few setups. I did like the use of drones. So, what's like the difference between like the probe and like the spotter, for instance? The probe has two sensors on it. Has the two most powerful uh, sensors on it. Mm -hmm. So it's very good for detecting for detecting uh, enemies, or you can fly it over there, and enemies will often have, um, be forced to destroy it, therefore revealing their position uh, a bit earlier than they may wish, uh, just so they can avoid the the. the the very good detection that uh, that the probe will give, and they'll do the same to you. Mm -hmm. And the difference between that and the spotter is that the spotter is a probe that takes off one of those sensors and replaces it with a painter. And what that does is, if you can hit the enemy with a painter, it adds signature to them for the next turn. So, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, if a ship is trying to hide. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, uh, a good example is destroyers. Destroyers, when they charge you, will dump as much uh, countermeasures as they can in an attempt to disappear from your sensors, which can be very bad because if they get close, they can one-shot most most ships. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a good tactic with them, or a good tactic, is to keep away from them, get the hell away from them. <laughs> but failing that, if you have a spotter, you can try hitting them with a spotter when when they use their countermeasures. And then that will add signature to the point where they probably can't hide, and you can keep a uh, keep a view on them. All right. So right now, I just add the probe to my little loadout here. Anything else you would suggest to put on before we start? Um, a very useful one, if you want to tank things a bit more, would be uh, a unit of shielding or a unit of uh, repairer. Okay. If you've got the space for forty-three, yeah, you've got the space. So if you go down a bit, to just after the weapons. Yep, yeah. I added it. Yep. And then oh, it's five seconds behind it, <laughs> and then fill up any remaining space with uh, with countermeasures. Okay. So we have quite a few open. We have, of course, a small shaft uh, and flares, all the way up to an another decoy. So and since I have three spots, I might as well just go straight up to 50. Alright, so we are going to be relying on our drones, and then hopefully spying these guys and finishing them off. So, I think there's our ship. We'll do a one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's time we get going. Okay. So here you go. Alright. So we talked about this on the podcast, but I think this is a good place to also bring it up. Um, as you worked on the game over the last four years, Charles, the UI went through a number of revisions. And one of the big ones was, of course, having this bottom screen um, information window, right? Yes, yes. It, there used to be, funny enough, I was actually looking at some old versions. I was doing a backup of all my code yesterday. And I found some old versions of the game, and uh, I was looking at the UI. It's mm -hmm. really, really ugly. <laughs> and uh, they had a, it had the information in a bar on the left, uh, which doesn't work nearly as well um, as as where it is now. There's a it, it feels easier to put more more on the screen by having it by having it where it is now. Yeah. And it's also important to have your information essentially localized, so players always know where to look for these kinds of things. Too often, we see developers, you know, have like something over on the upper left and then something on the upper right, and it's just like you have no idea what to focus on, and it becomes harder to learn. 
Yes, yes. And, and the other thing you often see, which I specifically try to avoid doing, is the multiple clicks to get information. Mm -hmm. um, and you definitely, uh, well, you shouldn't have to do that. I'm trying to think if there's, no, you just have to, you click to select a ship, and after that, uh, mm -hmm. it should all be available to you. Uh, if, if, if anything over, any extra is required, then over tooltip. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. And I know uh, one thing, if you were watching like a few seconds ago, you may have noticed I popped up the right-click UI menu. And I think you said on the cast, this was one of like the earlier parts of the UI that you were designing, and that you eventually just decided to focus on the bottom screen UI. Uh, yes, or to, to focus on making everything uh, available through the mouse and through the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So everything can actually be done three ways in this, in this game, <laughs> which is, uh, I think, more a result of my inexperience and just not being sure what the best way was. Mm -hmm. So the original way is the, the HUD and those buttons that you see. And then I've also, everything can be done either directly through the mouse with a right click or a left click. Or there's actually, uh, I haven't really told people, but there is actually uh, middle mouse click actions as well. <laughs> um, uh, or it can also be done through the um, through the stats display, mm -hmm. because the the idea is that you can do you can plan and and perform a single action for every um, for every type of for every component you have you have loaded. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, for those of you watching, what I was doing was going through some of the commands that you have access to. And if you notice, down here is this current SIG, previous SIG. Every time I do something, whether it's movement or turn something on, the current SIG goes up. And this is part of what we were talking about a few minutes ago with basically your visibility in space or the sonar aspect of the game. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Charles, could you talk a little bit about what SIG is and why you need to really be careful with managing it? Yes, well, if you go back to the old uh, submarine analogy, um, your signature is essentially your noise. It's how much, how much you're giving away, how much information about yourself you're giving away to everyone else in the game. So how easy it is for you to be detected. So the more you do, the, more, the easier it is for you to be detected. Because if you shoot a laser, they can say, well, where did that laser come from? Mm -hmm. If you use your active sensors, they can see, well, there's a sensor shell you know, roughly based in that area over there, and if you move, then your your engines are giving away a bit of information, and maybe even you're you're blocking out the stars behind you as as you pass them. Mm -hmm. So it's the amount of information you're giving out about yourself to the rest of the world, and the more information you give out, the more the more the enemy is going to know about you, and the more likely they are to be able to to hit you with their with their weapons. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the basic concept behind it. Mm -hmm. So basically, for what you're looking at right now, folks, if I did this command, I'm basically just like screaming out in space, here I am, here I am, come, come shoot me. So what you'll see in a minute is, once we start detecting the enemy, what's going to happen in terms of visibility. So one question I have for you, Charles, I was wondering about this during my spotlight of the game previously. Once a ship is 100% spotted, is there anything they can do to become hidden again? Or once they're spotted, that's kind of it? No, no, absolutely not. You can always still disappear. Okay. If you can, there's, there's two ways of doing it, because not only is it you based on your signature, how much information you're giving out, it's mm -hmm. also based on your senses and how much information they're able to take in at that distance. So the further away you are, um, the less effective the, the enemy's senses will be mm -hmm. against you. And it's, it's basically just a, uh, a straight multiplication. Your noise times how good their sensors are at that range. And that information is in, in the tooltips, in those graphs, when you, when you hover over the sensors. Um, but on top of that, you always lose, over time, you always lose a bit of information. Mm -hmm. So there's actually, uh, lose a bit of uh, detection. So there's actually two ways to, to disappear. One is if you can get your signature to zero, mm -hmm. then you can't be detected, you're invisible, you'll disappear from sensors uh, within a turn. Actually, sorry, there's three ways. So the other way to do that is to fly behind something so they lose line of sight on you. 
and then they'll also be at you'll be essentially be at zero if you're if they can't see you mm -hmm. and then the other way is if you're if the amount that they gain is less than the amount that they lose each turn then you'll start then the uh, then the detection will start to drop and normally that's only possible if you're either very quiet so your signature is in essentially the low single digits mm -hmm. uh, and uh, or if your signature is a bit higher, you're at you're at longer range, so you're, uh, you know, three, four, five, six, seven thousand kilometers from the enemy. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, what you're looking at, or for those of you watching, you may have noticed I'm playing around with some of these options, and you can see by turning on my flares or my decoy, my sig goes down. As Charles just said, when it hits zero, you're pretty much invisible. But of course when we do that it means you really can't do anything else because anything that you do is going to raise your sig back up now another part of this is of course turning on your sensor which for those of you watching you've probably seen this oscillating sphere pop out of my ship the sensors in this game as you can see it really raises your signature up but uh, for those watching this Charles and also for my education when do you want to use your sensors and basically take that SIG hit? Well, there's... Firstly, um, well, that's really two questions. is when in general and when on your ship. Mm -hmm. And in general, you can be a lot more um, laissez-faire in your use of sensors when it's your drone that's doing it and not your ship. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, in this, this setup, I would suggest uh, launching your probe and having your probe use its sensors mm -hmm. because that won't contribute to your signature um, it'll consider contribute to the probe signature and that's really what the probe is there for it's to, to find the enemy and uh, and force the enemy to, to destroy it rather than take the detection gain that, it's, that it sensors will uh, will give on your ship if you to, to use sensors uh, you'd use them more um, if the, the, the benefit of knowing where the enemy is uh, outweighs the, the gain that they're going to uh, it's going to occur, and that would be if you already think that the enemy has a good lock on you, but you don't have a good uh, a good detection on them, mm -hmm. then that would be a good time to use it. Or if you think it doesn't matter, that <laughs> that, that, that will gain on you, mm -hmm. um, you could use it then. But most of the time. Or if, if yours is the only ship left and you're, um, you're up against a ship which is the sensors perhaps aren't as good. Uh, for example, there, the, the, the cruiser that I mentioned before, the long-range sniper, is very dependent on its, uh, on its drones for detection. Its sensors are not very good. Mm -hmm. So if you can destroy its drones, then your, your sensors will be much better than its sensors. So if you use active sensors, uh, it won't actually affect its detection on you that much, but it'll affect your detection on it uh, a lot more. Mm -hmm. That's uh, another uh, example of when you'd want to use them. Okay. All right, so I'm going to launch my Pro. I'm going to send it over to the moon here, see what I can spot. And I figure since this is our first turn, we'll get one drone out as well, just to have something on the offensive if we somehow get lucky and find them. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to send him like over here, and again by moving him, the sig's going to go up. Now because I'm launching two drones, technically, you can see my sig has gone up. Now over the next turn, if I don't do anything else, my sig <coughs> should start to decline, right, or decrease. Your signature. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it will go back to base. So yeah. the, your signature. <coughs> sorry, excuse me. <coughs> your signature is uh, there's no holdover from turn to turn like mm -hmm. there is with detection. It's, it's completely reset at the start of every turn. Okay. So, as you can see, we have our probe set to go over here. If it doesn't spy anything immediately, I will maybe turn on its radar, which, as you can see, is a huge signature boost, but it should spot almost anything within medium range. And my drone over here is going to go and basically get set up. So as we said over the course of this play, this is a we go game. So as we've been talking over so many minutes, the AI has already plotted its course and it's going to do its action once we go. So let's see what happens. Oh, 
So the AI just apparently sent something off and we now see that there are I think it looks like this is going to be another drone ship because we have its main signature over here and it's launched three little ones. <laughs> now as you can see if I were to try and shoot him at this point our accuracy, our two hit chance is going to be so low it's not even worth it. But because we haven't done any actions we're still very hard to see. I don't think he notices us at this moment. Yeah, at this at this range, uh, and the noise you had, they'll have at best one percent, one two percent on your ship. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see if we can get close enough to pop them or get them revealed. So I'm gonna move my probe now. The blue here means that this is all done in one turn. If we go too far, this means it would take a second turn. So I'm going to move him like right here and see if he can basically get a snipe reveal there. Meanwhile, I think I'm going to, since he is, since he has three drones out, I think for the, to be a little bit more offensive, I'm going to release another laser drone. And then same thing, I'm going to send him, actually I'm going to move him here and then right click to sort of adjust the Z axis here. Or I'm sorry, the Y axis. And same for you. Oop. Yes, you know, that, that was something. Is that standard in, in all games? Because when, when I started developing, just as an, as an aside, uh, my first thought was Y would be, uh, would be on the flat plane and Z would be up. But in Unity, they, they actually do it that way. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That why is that why is up? Yeah, it's kind of weird to like think about in these kinds of relationships. I know when I try learning Unity as well, it's, it, you really have to like wrap your mind around sort of like a three-dimensional plane. Yes. Yeah, let me see. I'm going to move. Although not for me next time, because my next game will definitely be two D <laughs> <laughs> and much simpler. Okay, so he's over here. He's going to go straight up. I'm going to basically hide behind the moon here. And our probe is going to see if we can sneak over there and get a reveal. Because once we can get close enough, I can turn on my sensors. And if we spot them, it's going to give us a huge accuracy on them. But he probably has his own plans right now. So let's see what happens. Can <clears throat> I don't, have you you've been playing with the top buttons? Do you, is this the way you prefer to play it? This this setup. You mean you with? Off? Sorry, go on. I'm sorry. Do you mean with the uh, the UI down here? Yeah, you mean off to the left of of the uh, turn circle. Mm -hmm. There are four four buttons, and the two on the right. Uh, one's the grid, having the grid permanently on. Mm -hmm. um, and the one below that is show all plans. So it will show all the plans of your ships. So when you're planning out multiple ships, as long as you don't mind your screen being a bit more cluttered, mm -hmm. then um, uh, a lot of people like that one. Yeah. The grid is, some people like it, some people don't. Uh, the show all plans, um, most people seem to like it. Yeah. But you'd have it how you want, that's how, that, that's the reason they're buttons, because some people had very strong reactions to them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you can see, there are a lot of drones coming in. Yeah, I think I know what this is now. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to send him up, and I think it's time to play my hand. So I'm going to see if we can spot him. Now, as you can see, these guys are starting to be a little bit more revealed to us. They probably don't see my Corvette because he is hiding behind the moon, but there's a good chance they may spot the laser drones. A good way of checking that to see if you're hidden mm -hmm. is to select your uh, your Corvette, zoom in close, and then you can rotate the view around and see if you can see the um, see if you can see them, and then you can then you know. Okay, so I should probably move them like a little bit closer than just be on the safe side. So it, and if you double if you double click it, also it's centered. Okay. So if you just double click on it. Just click on, if you just, oh, sorry, you're five seconds there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now you can see any, um, 
just how hidden you are. Okay. So you probably weren't quite hidden against all of them there. A few of them, you, I think you were, but a couple you might have had a, a view on you. All right. I'm going to, since we have a good idea, I think, since this is a one-on-one, -on -one, probably that is the main ship up here. So I think we're going to try and get around them. It's going to be tricky, though. So you're going to focus on the ship rather than the drones? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good plan. Okay. Oop. There we go. And I'm going to kind of like hide right here for dear life and hope no one comes and gets me. But I think I will send out, I think I have one more laser drone left. You still have a lot of uh, a lot of countermeasures. Yeah, so you can always disappear. I'm going to just send him, basically just flying over here. And to be on the safe side, we'll use some of my countermeasures just to lower down a little bit while I move behind the moon. All right, so this turn we'll either see some action or we will set up for something big next turn. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh. All right, we've got... What the hell? I think I selected the wrong ship. <laughs> the laser drone, I thought I selected him, and that's not the one that moved. But apparently, my mistake still <laughs> got us through this pretty well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we now know... We have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Here's our main enemy. I think this is going to be the time that I want to try and disappear. So I'm going to kind of dis turn on my decoy. And we're going to see if we can take out this cruiser. We have a 55% chance of hitting it. I'm going to move him a little bit closer. Because right now his SIG is super high. So this probe pretty much they know he's there. Just like I know this is a laser drone. So we are going to actually try and open fire. And I'm going to move him over here. Five, go. And I'm just going to kind of wait right here and not do anything and hope they don't spot me. Actually, I want to delete. There we go. So just the decoy is on. And we're going to see if I can basically stay hidden in the middle of all those guys. And if you look at the UI over here, this represents their current SIG, right? If you, The bottom right-hand corner? Uh, yes. Yes. So, uh, so all the information, yep. uh, wait, again, if all the information is at least doubled, is, is at least available in two places. Mm -hmm. So you can actually use that to target as well. Yeah. All right, let's see. Either we'll get a win or I may just get blown up right here. Let's see what happens. Oh! Oh, he got me. I guess my SIG, I guess even with the low enough SIG, they must have saw me. Uh, well, that would be for next turn. Mm -hmm. yeah. See. So, the thing with the, the yeah, this is maybe something I need to make a bit clearer. Uh, with the countermeasures, mm -hmm. uh, well, with shooting, you shoot based on your on the detection from the previous turn. Mm -hmm. So, the countermeasures affect essentially the the chance that they have to hit you the t next turn. Okay. So when, when you're doing your plans, because essentially when you're doing, the idea is that, um, and this is something that was uh, that came out in playtesting, is that people wanted to know uh, exactly what their chance was to hit the enemy. Mm -hmm. So basically, as a result of your actions in, in a turn, at the end of your turn, when you're doing your planning for the next turn, it says this is what your chance to hit is. So when it says 55%, that is your actual definite chance to hit. It's not going to be affected by them dropping countermeasures mm -hmm. at that point. 
if they then drop countermeasures uh, the next turn, then you'll still get 55%, and then the next turn it'll be zero because they, mm -hmm. you won't be able to see them if they, okay. if they drop enough. So you have really have to think uh, a little bit ahead in planning and drop the countermeasures the turn before uh, before you think you're going to need it. Mm -hmm. It's one. Of the, I think we, when we spoke on the on the on the podcast, it was you know it rewards careful planning. Which is, mm -hmm. okay. Is there a way to control the replay, like stop it or fast forward or wind? Uh, no. Okay. You can if you think the uh, the play time is too fast or too slow, you can change that. Mm -hmm. If you go into uh, well, not not here, but in under options, there's a uh, option to say how long the play phase should last. So what the reason why I'm showing it repeatedly, not just to show how much I suck, but if you notice, the his probe painted me right there. So that added 25 to my SIG and probably also helped them in seeing me uh, and finishing me off right there. Not this turn. Okay. Next, next turn it would have done. All right. So then if we can see here... So they must have already have spotted me then from the turn before, because yeah, I was so you, close to these drones. Yeah, you, you you flew right next to one of the drones, and because you um, you flew actually quite a long way. That's your engines. It's non-linear your engines. So the further you fly, the noise sort of starts ticking up and up and mm -hmm. up further and further. So uh, flying your full range, which you which you did. Mm -hmm. uh, is actually about as much, about the same as uh, using your active sensors. Right. So playing that and then ending right next to one of their drones means they probably had a very good hit chance on you. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's try this one more time, see if we can get through this without, with at least a small win. So this time, since we already talked a lot about the UI, I'm going to make these moves a little bit quicker. Okay. So... But Yep. Perhaps uh, this would be a good time to to ask you about uh, about Twitch. Sure. So I am do not know much about Twitch. This is actually the first time I've seen someone live stream on mm -hmm. Twitch. Uh, I've watched recorded plays, well, made basically like like uh, treating Twitch like YouTube, but that's also not the point. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I don't know, one of the things like information I can get about uh, YouTube is I can tell. Um, what someone plays, how often they play, uh, and how many people watch them mm -hmm. on YouTube, because all that information is quite freely available on their on their screen. So if someone sends me a request uh, for a key, mm -hmm. and I get a lot of them, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're on YouTube, I can quickly go and check, and I can see their their email address, and often it doesn't match, which is a very bad sign. Mm -hmm. I can, or and I can see if they do. Um, if they regularly do videos, because sometimes I get keys from people who haven't made a video in a year, which is also a bit uh, a bit strange. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can see what they do, so I can make sure that they do indie games or strategy games or tactical games. Uh, and I can see how many people watch them, which is actually one of the less things I'm concerned about, because as long as they're real, I'm willing to, give, willing to support them and give them a key. But none of that information I can find on Twitch. Mm. So. How do you how do you tell who someone is, uh, how often they they do videos, what they do videos of, and how many people watch them? Is that sort of information available on Twitch? And I'm just hmm, that is a good question. I've been doing more, I think, with YouTube than I have been Twitch. At least, as you said, because the features are open, like as you, the analytics, I think are a lot easier. Hmm. Uh, let me see. I'm sorry, my friend just sent me a message and just completely uh, ruined my train of thought. But um, I know you can check people's profiles. There's a way to check like the channel. You can see what their highlights are. Now, if they do any videos, like uh, for those of you who don't know a little bit more about Twitch, if you don't do Twitch streaming, the videos only remain on your account for a period of 14 days. I think if you become like a partner or you get... Um, more recognized, I'll preserve it longer. Wait, so wait, you mean the past broadcasts are only the last 14 days? Yes, unless you create a highlight of it. 
and then it will remain sort of in your portfolio in a sense. Now that's that's very useful because quite a few of the people who've sent me requests for keys from Twitch mm -hmm. had nothing listed on their past broadcasts. So that's good to know that means that they've done nothing in the last 14 days. Yeah, so if they have no broadcast whatsoever, that means that either they have not done anything in more than 14 days or they haven't done anything, period. Mm, okay, that's that's very good to know. All right, it's time to try something crazy here. And one of the things. Yep. Oh, sorry, go. On. Oh no, go ahead. I was going to say one of the things that uh, amazed me is the uh, the storm of, of key requests you get when you release the game, and uh, how how dodgy some of them look. <laughs> right, so here you're leading with your drones, and you're keeping your Corvette back. So yeah, that, this is your your plan from what you were meant to do before. And yeah. That you're presenting with your ship. <laughs> this is a much this is a, a much better plan than charging them with your ship, especially because um, it'll be the same ship as last time. So it's the cruiser again, and you know that's a long range sniper. So yeah. it's going to try and charge you with its with its drones to get a good lock. Yeah. And I got my drone sort of spread out here. And my pro was going to hopefully paint these guys for the next turn. But let's see what happens. Go team. Alright, so... As you can see, they probably saw my laser drone. They probably know he is there like a sore thumb. We know his thing is right here as well. We know his probe, so if I shoot it, chances are it's going to die. We also have good image on their on the cruiser. Now, because my guy is hiding behind the moon, I don't think I'm being spotted. I don't think they actually see me just yet. I, they probably will see you next turn, though, because you can see that uh, angle. Mm -hmm. You're not actually hidden to those two front forward, two front enemy drones. Right here, drone one and drone two. Yeah, they they're going to see you next turn for sure. All right, so I'm going to try and move and, myself and around. So we have an option, we have a few choices here. I have my three drones. Now this guy, there's a good chance he's gonna get shot. So I'm gonna move him, and I'm just gonna go sort of hog wild on the cruiser. So my choice here is, I can shoot this pro and take it out if it's thing. But I could also just go for a triple tag team on this cruiser. Especially with my probe here, who I'm going to try and get closer and just um, paint him as best as we can. Now, I do have a shot, I think, of this probe. So I can sort of like hide behind and try to snipe. Because without this probe, he loses his main way of tracking me. So I think I'm going to take the chance. Plus, it will be a little bit more action for the folks watching. So I'm going to move over there. I'm going to activate a few flares, but meanwhile, I'm going to send my drones over here and see if we can hopefully take them out. There's a good chance that this drone is going to die, though. That's what my prediction is. What do you think? Uh, I think that's uh, a pretty reasonable plan. Oh, sorry, I'm standing up, so you might not be able to hear me. <laughs> Uh, I've, uh, I've got two computers set up vertically, so I was um, standing up to watch you. Um, I think that's a pretty good plan. Have you got your... You, if, you may want to consider using more countermeasures on your Corvette so it's completely hidden. Okay. That would be the only thing I'd suggest. Alright. So... But you might find it hard because you're, you're shooting. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you're going to shoot, mm -hmm. um, then on your Corvette, then maybe you want to... Um, use a decoy? Well, either either use a decoy or don't use any... Uh, don't use any countermeasures this turn and plan to use them next turn and spend... Um, and, and basically bank on you being able to hide behind the moon. Because you've got a good movement plan there. Okay. I think there's a very good chance that you'll be hidden behind the, behind the, behind the moon. Alright. Okay, folks, let's see if we can get this going. So that actually went really well. 
we took out or I took out his probe is there a way oh here is we can replay what happened there so if you can see what just happened I was able to snipe his probe with my ship thereby he has lost his ability to see meanwhile we've been doing damage and we now have a full ID on his cruiser that means that we're we have a hundred percent chance of killing him so I think this turn will be his last turn. Yeah, and I think you'll be okay. So by my count, they're going to do um, 13 points of damage against you this turn. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest just because you won't have line of sight on the cruiser, use enough countermeasures on your Corvette to drop the signature to zero just in case uh, something happens. But I'm pretty sure you've got, <laughs> you've got 18 on them. I'm pretty sure that's enough to destroy them. So I think you've won it this turn. All right. So let's see we get a victory. Yay. What did the, um, by the way, Charles, let me replay the following. What does the, like, the hit negative 5, hit negative 4, hit negative 1 mean? Is that sort of like my, uh, SIG going down? No, that's the damage. That's okay. negative on your, on your hull. Alright. So when it says minus 4, that's minus 4 to your hull. Alright, so they were basically going to rip me apart, essentially, if... If this went one more turn, there's a good chance I probably would have been killed. Well, no, because you used sensors to drop your okay to drop your uh, signature to zero, so they couldn't have shot at you next turn. Okay. Oh no, but they painted you. Yeah. So they yeah, so they would have still got you. Yes, you probably would have died next turn if it had lasted next turn. Mm -hmm. So what you were saying in terms of how signature affects the next turn, if a pro or something paints me while like in the middle of the turn and another drone is shooting me does that drone's two hit chance go up or does it remain the same and will only be impacted for the next turn only impacted the next turn okay yeah so what you have is when you do your planning mm -hmm. you you have certainty on your shooting uh, for the next turn all right so basically unless i was able to even if i were to drop it down to zero, there is still probably a good chance they were going to see me that next turn and just take me out. But we were able to essentially sneak around and get him before then. Yes. But that's kind of the risk reward of playing Concealed 10 is that he is limited by his drone just as I am. If I wanted to, I could have turned my drones right around and blow his up and thereby he would have no means of attacking me. Or just the sh ship laser. Yep. That's, oh. Yeah. That's, yeah. It, but the um, the cruiser has very powerful lasers, very powerful long range lasers. So it always the, the cruiser AI, even on on uh, on, I don't know what to call it, on the normal AI, because mm -hmm. there's also a hard AI which is all different. Mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, on the normal AI, it will try to keep it range from what it thinks is uh, the most powerful ship, uh, and then snipe it with its lasers. All right. Okay, so in terms of time, I just did a time check. We are just over an hour into the stream. So I think what we'll do is we'll try our hand at the online game. That way um, we can see how someone who actually can play the game will kick my ass a few times. And I think that'll probably take us to the end. Like I said, for you folks watching this live, if you have any questions for Charles or the game, be sure to leave them in the Twitch chat and we'll get to them. But in terms of this actual recording length, we'll keep it to, I would say, maybe another between 15 and 30 minutes. I think that should be more than enough to end the stream on. What did you say, Charles? Yep, that sounds good to me. All right. I'm just looking, I'm just looking up Giant Bomb because... Um... Yeah. Ace Wraith in the in the uh, chat has said that it Twitch syncs with Giant Bomb. So yeah, I think it's just look at the side. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that is a very interesting issue with uh, fraudulent keys and fraudulent YouTubers and stuff. I know that I've had to deal with that myself as someone who reaches out to developers and again try to put the a good foot forward. Sometimes developers reach out to me first, like I think um, Eric reached out to me regarding Conceal a Tent, but there are a lot of times where I have to reach out to developers, and sometimes it's hard, again, to prove that you are who you say you are. 
but uh, it, yeah, yeah, it definitely is. You certainly after a little while, you get quite um, quite hardened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that would be a discussion, I think, for a podcast. I don't think the folks listening would be too interested in that, but I think that would be a really good topic, maybe to have you back on, maybe a few more indie, uh, indie developers on. Uh, yes, yes. I think that, uh, well, I mean, one of, the, one of the reasons that I listen to your show is that uh, I don't, I, I'm, I'm fairly new to this, mm -hmm. and so I find it very interesting to hear the stories of other developers for things like this, which I just didn't know when I started. Yeah. I oh, yeah. I was surprised the first time I got you know twenty emails in my in my inbox, <laughs> yeah. all asking for keys. I was like, "What? Oh, that's great!" And then you look at me, you go, uh, oh. 20 keys to a non-existent website." Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why in my thing, I always make sure I have the site listed, the YouTube channel. I'm trying to get myself verified on Twitter just to, you know, have the trifecta of proof there. So anytime yeah. I contact someone, it's like, oh, this isn't some random guy who wants 80 keys to pose on some website. Yes, yes, and presumably you only ask for one key as well, yeah. which is, which always, um, I and mean, when people ask for multiple keys, mm -hmm. that's when it really starts my. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure about this. It's uh, because I think you spoke before um, a quite an interesting podcast. You spoke about. Um, uh, reseller sites and G two A, and you know I'm pretty sure if I gave 20 keys to someone, it wouldn't take 20 keys to uh, yeah. for a non-existent website <laughs> to to review my game. I'm pretty sure they'd end up on G two A. Yeah, and that again, I mean, we could easily just skip playing the game and talk for like another hour or two hours on that topic alone. Yeah. Well, you you have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We've done that. And Mm -hmm. that the person you spoke to knows has thought about it far more and has far more to say so if, if anyone is interested in, in reseller sites look back over your previous podcast to the uh, to the one on reseller sites and I think that would be um, a very good very good introduction to it yeah and um, if I can find the link I'll make I'll try to put a note that in the notes here on the podcast or I'm sorry on the recording but uh, you can it's my conversation with Lars to say from level up labs where we talked about key sellers and G2A. All right, uh, so I think because uh, you gave me the friend invite um, before I loaded the, after the game was loaded, I don't think you're showing up on my friends list. Oh. Uh, let me, I think I may have to just quit out quickly and just jump back on. So, uh, one second folks, you're gonna get the black screen. I'm um, Jarrod Technology, is it? Oh, I'm, I'm five seconds behind you, probably already quit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, there you go. Are you going to show up? There you go. Yeah, so I think it was the fact that uh, you sent to me after the game was loaded, so it didn't properly pull my friends list. All right, one second. I just want to pull back up the Twitch chat. Okay, there we go. Back on. Okay, so can we do? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're gonna do a wait time of seven days. That <laughs> won't be here for a while there, but I will. Oh, you don't have to. I mean, it'll do it as soon yeah. as um, as soon as the second, as the last person uh, submits their plans. Mm -hmm. All right. So it, yeah. If I submit my plans after a minute and you submit, submit yours after two minutes, then after about two minutes and two seconds, mm -hmm. the uh, the results should be available. Okay. Uh, do you have a map reference? Nope. All right. Uh, we'll do fracture. I'll set that up just to see if we get anything different. All right. I'm going to try a different Fract ship. Okay. We'll both be on the same ship. Okay. So whatever whatever ship you choose, I'll have the same ship. Okay, so I'm going to go cruiser then. Oh no no, it's automatic. Okay. The, the, when, the, when the request comes in, it'll it'll say that uh, you've made a challenge against me with these terms, uh, and one of the terms is this is the ship that you uh, that we're using. Okay. Okay. So I see there are heavy drones, but. 
I definitely don't have the capacity for that unless I remove a lot of stuff. Which even then, as you said, with the other uh, types of ships, they're somewhat limited because they have locked on stuff that I can't remove. Mm. So I Ah, cruisers, cruisers, okay. All right, so we'll see if a little sniping game will work. Okay. This so, will be interesting because we'll both be um, uh, we'll both be snipers because you pretty much can't be anything else when you're in a when you're in a cruiser. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Now, where are the <laughs> all the asteroids are up there? All right, so now I'm pretty much very nervous. I'm pretty sure <laughs> if I, I'm just expecting you to like snipe me on the second turn. <laughs> I'd say yeah. No, I, that's probably unlikely. Hmm. <laughs> I want to do that. That's um. Uh, we need to have. Oh, for all the chat. Way, I turned it off, so I'm not watching your screen anymore. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> Um, we have from chat about uh, Brian Rubin from Space Game Junkie. He's celebrating his five-year anniversary. But yeah, we at some point we should probably have um uh, you, him, and I all in like the same cast. I think that would that'll probably be, like a good four-hour conversation, though. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what do we have? What hit submit? Okay. I'm still trying to. This for you folks watching this, and I don't know if any of you are putting money down on this outcome. I would say put the money down on Charles here. I'm pretty sure that's going to be what's going to happen, like the next four or five turns, maybe less than that. We'll see. It, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. I haven't played um, a, a duel with cruisers before because. Uh, the because that that takes away the the part of the game where you're choosing your loadout. So often when you play uh, duels, it's like trying to think what will my what will my opponent choose. So I mean an example is um, uh, in a in a game one of the early games when I was just after joining early access and just after adding in the challenge of Steam Friends, I challenged one of the early access uh, guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought I'd use a usurper build because at that point, and still the case, there's no usurpers in the campaign. So I thought um, I thought he wouldn't uh, wouldn't expect it, but he did. <laughs> and it turned into, he thought was, he, he expected to me for me to be tricky, and so he I thought I was I really thought I was going to lose that game. I just got quite lucky, and um, we just sort of circled each other for about five or six turns. Waiting for the other person to make a mistake, and uh, luckily he made the first mistake. <laughs> All right, I am going to submit, and we will see how quickly I get killed. Okay, so now we hit action, and let's see. Oh, I see something. I should point out there's a um, one of the things I added in this mode is uh, there's a station. So if you see, yeah, you you may have even detected it. There's a station which is neutral, mm -hmm. and if you um, if you destroy the the uh, station or after uh, I think ten turns. It will blow up. It will drop a. Um, it will drop a core, which if you pick up the core by flying over it, and then after five turns you'll win the game if you haven't been destroyed. Mm. And the downside is the core will massively raise your signature, mm -hmm. and thus make it really close to in, impossible uh, for you to. Uh, how am I going to do this? Make it pretty close to impossible for you to 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 hide. Mm. And um, yeah, the reason for that is I found that if you had two people with stealth builds, 
they could uh, hide and never actually come across each other because they'd be <laughs> flying off the different parts of the different parts of the map. All right, let's see. So it, 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 it makes it forces a focus to the game. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm expecting death here. Okay, so I found the core station. Oh, no, I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I see something coming at me. I just don't know what it is yet. Still not ready yet. Oh boy, let's see what happens. Oh, I survived past turn three, so I consider that a moral victory at least. This is how I know I'm not a big Wego fan, because I finished my turn very quickly, and you just spent like an extra minute or two. So I know you've just concocted some crazy, some insane plan that I think I'm going to die right now from. I just have this feeling that that's what's going to be the result. Let's I see. I was if... trying to guess. Yeah, I was trying to guess which one was your ship. Oh, Wait, guess what? Let's see. Oh. Okay, well, good news, I'm still alive. Okay. Alright, it's time to try something incredibly stupid. I'm fairly sure that someone is about to get killed at this turn, and the mind money is going to be on me. Let's see what happens. Oh boy. I just looked up on Giant Bomb. My game's actually uh, on there, but I can't see anything about um, about plays or anything like that. Can't see any statistics. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. This is one of the tricks of navigating in a three-dimensional plane. You have to keep track of where everything is. 
Okay, so I'm gonna move over here. Or am I moving? That's the big question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we shall see. Oh, I got a bad feeling about this one. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not confident in this game. I'm not confident. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. Oh, I'm alive. That's good. <laughs> All right. So you took that out. I've lasted longer than I thought, so that's good. Uh, boy, here we go. Uh. Alright, I think this might be the end. The end. Yeah. <laughs> It's as it is. Don't think you can do enough to. No, you can almost, but not quite. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking on um, Concealed Intent, and there's a wiki page for it. Oh, this is on Giant Bomb, but I can't see any any stats. But the, the fact page talked about um, displaying box art and things like that. At least it's, at least it's on there. Mm -hmm. Oh, got hit submit. <laughs> Delaying my inevitable defeat there. <laughs> All right, let's see me die. Oh, well, I got a good hit on you there, but not enough. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was kind of what I expected to happen. Yeah, I'm not very... Um, <clears throat> I never really want to um, so, uh, handicap myself. I don't know if it's really, <laughs> it's really fair. <laughs> um, it's still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I yeah. said on uh, my the video when we talk about on the cast, the Wigo genre is not is one of the few that I'm just not really versed in, just because there aren't so many examples of it. But mm -hmm. I will say it's at least it's a little bit easier to play and sort of process what's going on compared to uh, Frozen Synapse that we talked about on the cast. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> I would have, um, yeah. When, when I when I tried to uh, when I made the game, I tried to uh, make it as easy to understand as as Frozen Synapse and, mm -hmm. and Homeworld. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, they're both in in complex genres. So, if you just say that you find it a bit easier, I think that's what you said. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, is actually uh, I consider that I consider that high praise. 
I think the only thing that's still a little tricky is the whole signature thing and um, what it affects this turn, what it affects next turn, and that yeah. kind of, again, like, thinking, like, a move or two in advance kind of thing. Yeah, that's... I've, ha I've had a bit of feedback since the, uh, since the release on, on that. And I've got a few ideas. I mean, I could try... At this stage, I don't want to make huge changes to the tutorial, but I could mm -hmm. look at the wording. Mm -hmm. What one person suggested was having... Because now I have uh, a couple of videos in the tutorial um, links. Mm -hmm. um, I thought what, I, what one person suggested is actually having a, um, uh, a link to a fact where all this stuff is, is written out. Because the maths around working out what your section is Mm -hmm. can be quite complicated, but there's no way I would put that in a tutorial more mm -hmm. than I, I have. And yeah. I was questioning when I put the, put the what I had in the tutorial, whether that was something that was going to lose people. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Tom Chick has my game. <laughs> I sent him a key, but I never heard back from him. And you never know whether people use it or not. Yeah, it's weird. I see Brian's yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, I know Brian's because I played Brian. Yeah. Brian, uh, <laughs> I beat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I sent Tom Chicka uh, a code. Um, so yeah, it was good. No, he, he, obviously, uh, he obviously used it. That's good. Because <laughs> um, you send out codes, and I know that um, probably about 60, 50 to 60% of the codes are just never used. Because I don't know who uses them. Mm -hmm. I, can, I know how many sent out and how many in total were redeemed. Mm -hmm. And so I know that probably only about 40% of the keys that I sent were actually used. Yeah. So I just work on the assumption that anyone who didn't, uh, I didn't hear back from probably didn't use it. <laughs> All right. Um, I figure uh, since that game went so quickly, I'm sure one more will go as fast as well. We'll do <laughs> one more, I think, challenge. And then that will probably take us right to an hour and a half, and we will wrap it up. Okay. All right. And I chose the skiff this time because I figured with the smaller ship, okay. it will be a lot more. A victory or defeat will be a lot more pronounced this time. Uh, yeah, it'll be. <laughs> it'll be very hard. Two skiffs is. Um, there's not much edge anyone will have. Mm -hmm. It'll. I think it'll. It'll be. Uh, there will be more a luck-based mm -hmm. uh, game. Who gets the shot away first? Yeah. All right. So I think that's going to do it. All right. So we'll get through this. And like I said, for you folks watching this live, if you have any questions about what's going on or the game or just anything in general, I guess, um, be sure to leave them in. If we don't have anything when we're finished with this one, we'll probably wrap up the stream. And also, for those of you watching this, either live or recorded, there's a new goal up on the Patreon campaign. For $25 or more, not only will you get updates uh, before anyone else as to when we do streams or podcasts, but you'll be free to submit questions to us, which we'll ask and credit you for during the respective casts or stream. So be sure to check that out on the Patreon campaign. You can, of course, find me on there under Game Wisdom. Again, mm. I find it very telling that you're spending a lot longer figuring out your level than I am. I think that's a pretty good sign as to who's going to win this. I, uh, I started a lot later than you because I'm not watching your stream. Mm -hmm. So I presume you, you might have started before me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also takes a bit of time for the, for the challenge to appear at the other end. It, uh, <laughs> it updates every minute or so. All right, so we have a new map. And the maps are uh, randomly or procedurally generated? Uh, these ones are generated by me. Random and procedural would be roughly the same thing. Okay. These are the maps from the, uh, from the campaign. Okay. So this is... This is the map from the uh, decoding mission, okay. from the mission where you capture the decoder. Okay. So let's see what we got. Well, this should be very interesting <coughs> and probably very deadly for me. 
you know, these little ships, we really don't have a lot of choice in what we can do. Uh, no, no. And if you get hit twice, you'll probably will probably be dead. So it's it, it might be quick. <laughs> All right. There. Anything else? All right. Does this map also have the same thing with the five turns or ten turns that the space station will explode? Yes. Okay. All of them will. Okay. All of the jewels will. Mm. All right, let's yes. see. Hey, what the? <laughs> oh, I see something. But what is it? Yeah, the other thing with these is they uh, the sensors aren't quite as good. Oh, oh, oh no! I've been mis <laughs> I think I've done something a bit silly. Oh well. Oh no, I haven't. It's a good old game of hide and seek. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, I just saw something. Oh, uh, yes, okay. so limited here with what we can do. It is. Okay. Curious. While we're talking about like um, outside topics, I'm wondering like how popular like the WeGo genre is for like uh, like the competitive or watching like these kinds of things. Like if people like this is a genre that would be something interested in like watching. Like I know Frozen Senat was going was trying to position itself more like along like, the esports kind of thing. Yeah, or the or Frozen Cortex. Their follow up is even more so, mm -hmm. being a sports game. Um, yes, I don't know if it really took off. Uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not aware of much. I know it's, <clears throat> I mean, I heard a discussion by some people about you know, what they're doing. I think mean, the, the Wego genre is more about um, making sure you don't have to wait, so it sort of builds up the pace a bit. Mm -hmm. But, um, if you're going to do that in on a computer, in then you can do it far more effectively with a real-time strategy game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why the strategy game, especially the micro-oriented ones, became so popular among the esports crowd. Like StarCraft, I think being the big name, except a uh, big name example, or even something like Dota, which is even mm. more micro-oriented. Yeah, yeah, and and. I think that uh, that's m much more action to watch. Mm -hmm. I thought of oh, our senses are so crap; we can't mm -hmm. detect each other. Or well, at least I can't detect you. <laughs> um, sorry. <clears throat> Let's try and uh, get things going a bit. Uh, I've gone what I was saying now. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, what were we talking about? Uh, esports. 
and like real time strategy games? Yeah, I think that they're probably a lot more interesting to watch because there's so much more happening. I mean, in 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 these games, uh, you know, there's there's quite a bit of thinking involved, so uh, mm -hmm. it's not you'd really have to have some good commentary explaining what was going on. I think. Yeah. Uh, I thought about one of the things that I, I actually thought about doing uh, when I started off was all the games. Uh, this this game is being recorded on the server. So I have a complete state of the game mm -hmm. uh, sitting on the server. So I was thinking of make, making a replay function. Uh, so you could uh, replay it back at any speed you wanted. Perhaps at, you know, at um, mixing all the turns together so there's no... Um... Oh, I just make my move. Uh, mixing all the turns together so it's just one long play phase mm -hmm. from start to finish <clears throat> and being able to switch, switch point of view as well um, but you know that's one of those things that would take a bit of a significant chunk of extra work and no one seemed to really want it and mm -hmm. it, it would only really be useful if if people started to want, wanting to watch games afterwards which I don't think most people want to do when uh, when they're the person playing them mm -hmm. oh boy See what happens. From from a developer, yeah, I thought that might happen. Um, from a developer point of view, did you see that uh, a tweet that's been going around recently of uh, the person suggesting that <clears throat> No Man's Sky could have added uh, yes in a, in a <laughs> week, <laughs> one person for a week uh, work could have added multiplayer to to it. That what I thought was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people don't really realize, I think, how much, uh, how much work can go into these things. I didn't when I started. And I suggest to anyone who thinks it's, uh, it's really easy, like I did when I started, that they mm -hmm. try it. And yeah. Soon just, it's not. So yeah. You have to be really careful about what you, what you add. <laughs> yeah, one week for multiplayer. Oh, one week for one person as well. Oh. One week for the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, that's a little unrealistic. Humorously unrealistic. Okay. I think uh, you might be doing much better uh, in, in this game. <laughs> we'll see what happens, though. Oh! How did you do that? Damn! <laughs> you can't even pass Damn! <laughs> you, you, I, I might be, I might be about to lose my undefeated. Uh... Uh... Yeah. <clears throat> we both, we both adjusted the loadout, and I didn't think that you'd add, uh, you'd add countermeasures. So you've probably got a much, much better block on me now than I've got on you. Well, we'll see. Uh, we both had the right idea with the drone, though, and <laughs> setting them up. Yeah. Uh, but we also had the right idea of having them a long way from us, so it didn't, <laughs> it didn't mm -hmm. affect us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I've got 11% on you. Um, I have 14. 14? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is just going to, this is coming down to luck. Who's, who's 10% chance mm -hmm. uh, will play out first? There goes the pod. Okay. I bet for people watching, this is either like the most high tense thing you've ever seen or like the most boring thing. Like, who's yeah. gonna hit first? <laughs> oh, I think you got... Oh, man, he hit me, yes. 
Oh, did I get lucky? Okay, that's it's still it. A we're keeping range on each other, so our weapons probably aren't being particularly powerful either. It's like mm. two, uh, two very weak, <laughs> two very weak ships, try ships trying to keep a good distance. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so if you don't destroy me in five turns, uh, then I'll win. <laughs> you get that message? Yep. Yeah. I think you'll probably destroy me in the next turn, though, considering my luck. Yeah, you haven't been... Your, your detection on me must be better than my detection on you. So you've been quite unlucky not to hit me yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the story of my life, I think, with this. Oh, you still haven't. Come on. Your detection on me must be... Must be huge by now. Mine's creeping up. Mine's at 58%. <laughs> I'm still at 14. <laughs> Come on. There we go. I took off my scanner, so I had no way of detecting you any further. Oh, have you been using your active senses? No, oh, I haven't. Good. I took it off because I had to fit on the extra... Wait. Um, Sorry, wait. Did you got... How, ma how many sensors have you got? I didn't have any sensors on my skiff. It was just the oh, one on the oh, drone. Oh, 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 that's why you that's why you can't detect me. If mm -hmm. you had <clears throat> if you had sensors on that ship, I think you might have beaten yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. We are gone over the hour and a half, but I think we showed off at least um a good starter for a concealed tent. You can see with the amount of options in skirmish mode, if you get like a few friends into the game, you'll have a lot of different ways to play and just let things go out differently each time. Yes, yes, I mean there's I mean there's a meta game there with uh with what what you load out as well. Mm-hmm. All right. I think we're going to wrap up the stream here. It's actually going on about 8 o'clock my time. I have dinner waiting for me, and again, it it's still very early in the day for Charles. I've got breakfast waiting yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Charles, if you, uh, when we say goodbye in like the next minute, just hang on and Skype for like one minute. I just have a few cool. after things to ask you. For those of you who have been watching this live, Thanks so much for tuning in. While I'm going over my usual end of video speech, if you have any final questions for Charles or Conceal a Tent, uh, be sure to ask them now. For those, so, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. If you've been enjoying this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, it always helps out. Check out, game, ah, check out game-wisdom.com where I examine the art and science of games. You can find my podcast with Charles there regarding Conceal Intent, as well as that discussion on key reselling and G2C with Lars Ousay. I'll, if I can, I'll be sure to include links to them in the podcast notes or annotated on this video. 
Follow me on Twitch and Twitter under GW Bicer for the latest updates of new content. And as I said earlier, if you'd like to support Game Wisdom, please check out our Patreon campaign. Once again, that's under Game Wisdom. Your donations can help to keep Game Wisdom supported and allow me to keep doing this while, of course, supporting myself financially. You can find some nifty rewards there, including ways for you to interact with us more on these streams and casts. And if we can hit some goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy, including streams, videos, and more. So, with all that said, thanks so much for tuning into, for those of you live, the live play of Conceal Intent, and for those of you watching this record on YouTube. And be sure to tune into our next play. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get one scheduled real soon. So before we end the stream, Charles, do you have any final thoughts or anything you'd like to say for the people watching? Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a good night, as the, as the case may be. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you all next time. Take care.